Let's get into the details of the wonderful ever-present normal curve. The standard normal curve looks like this bell shape that we're pretty used to here. And what you'll often see here is these numbers labeled on the bottom. And we always have zero in the middle on the standard normal curve. And then we have negative one kind of around this inflection point here. Uh, and then negative two as we start to wind down, and negative three is where it almost seems to collapse down to zero on both sides. Now what these numbers mean is how many standard deviations you are, or an individual is, from the average, from the mean. And these are often called z-scores. I think these are a little bit easier to understand in examples, so we'll get into that in a moment. But first let's look at the formula for a z-score. If you're going to calculate how many standard deviations you are from the mean, you have to start out with your value, uh, the individual you're talking about, and we're going to call that x. Uh, that would be the score they got, or the number of points they earned, or the height of a person, whatever it is, the individual, uh, their value. We're dealing with quantitative information in this case. Now you're going to subtract away the mean and what you're finding out here is how far away is this individual from the average. Once you know how far away they are, let's say they are six inches above average, then you divide by the standard deviation. So if the standard deviation is three inches and you are six inches above average, then you are two standard deviations above average. You would have a z-score of two. And when you're looking at the standard normal curve, that would put you out here. Now, when we're dealing with the normal curve, we're going to talk a lot about uh, calculating probabilities. You're going to see this P notation here, and then inside it's going to be uh, a score, X is greater than or less than something, or Z, if you're talking about the standard normal curve, is less than or greater than something. We're not going to ask about if something is equal, so we don't ask if P is exactly, uh, or the probability is exactly a Z score of 1 because uh, whenever you have a continuous distribution here, this is an infinitely small slice. So we're going to instead ask is questions about a region or an area. We're going to say between these two parts of the curve, what is the area? What is the probability? Obviously under the entire curve, the probability is going to be 1.0 or 100%. If we were to take smaller sections though, common sections, let's say between negative 1 and 1, standard deviation, the area trapped between those two parts of the curve is 0.68 or 68 percent of the standard normal curve is within one standard deviation of the mean. If you want to go out two standard deviations you're looking at 95 percent and when we talk about things like confidence intervals at 95 percent we usually go out two standard deviations uh, each way uh, because it ends up being about a 95% interval. So that's a very common one. And then finally, if you were to go out to three standard deviations, you would cover 99.7% of the curve, or 0.997 probability uh, that it falls under that. That means 0.3% falls beyond, in either direction, beyond three standard deviations. So it's a very, very high percentage of the population is within three standard deviations of the mean. Looking at this again, uh, this is actually a good thing to write down. You almost want to memorize this. Between within one standard deviation, 68%, two standard deviations, 95%, three standard deviations, 99.7. Reason this can be useful is when you're dealing with any calculation based problems, you can do a lot of it in your head uh, by simply knowing these numbers.